Berkeley goes nuts over Milo Yiannopoulos protests. A protest against a scheduled talk from Breitbart News troll Milo Yiannopoulos turned violent at the University of California Berkeley on Wednesday night, causing $100,000 in damage. Berkeley was known as a bastion of free speech. Not letting Milo whine goes against everything the school is supposed to stand for. Instead of resorting to violence and virtue signaling, the protesters should have answered with their own free speech and let the best argument win. Naturally, Trump felt the need to hop into the mix by threatening to take away federal funding from Berkeley. Berkeley receives $370 million in funding each year for scientific research. But going after the lab nerds would be as pointless as the riots were. Democrats also need to do their part and stand up and strongly condemn the riots. As for Milo, screaming at him like Trigglypuff just feeds his troll business model. Just let the fool speak. True freedom of speech means listening to those voices and opinions you want to hear the least. And honestly, it's actually more entertaining than sitting in your own echo chamber. Like it when things get out of hand? Then watch these. Prison inmate disemboweled and nearly cut in two during riot. An inmate at a Northern California prison was found killed and mutilated, his body missing organs and nearly cut in half, according to a disturbing post-mortem report obtained by the Associated Press. On May 4, a riot broke out at medium security California State Prison, Solano, involving 58 prisoners. 24-year-old inmate Nicholas Anthony Rodriguez was killed by blows to the head, one leaving a deep, star-shaped wound on his forehead. After quelling the riot, guards conducted an inmate headcount. At 4.30 p.m., Rodriguez was found to be missing. Almost five hours passed before guards discovered his body, nearly severed in two, inside a garbage bucket in a shower stall. The post-mortem revealed various organs had been cut out of his abdomen and chest. The autopsy also showed Rodriguez had alcohol in his system, and prison officials are looking at Rodriguez's cellmate, 46-year-old Jesus Perez, as the sole and prime suspect in his grisly mutilation. The AP reports prison investigators are considering the idea that the riot may have been used as cover for the killing. Protesters film targeting white motorists during riots. Pumpkin riots in New Hampshire as bros go wild. White riots broke out at an annual pumpkin carving festival near Keene State College in New Hampshire over the weekend, with police firing tear gas at students who were throwing bottles, rocks, skateboards, and other objects. Thousands of inebriated students flooded onto the streets on Saturday from different parties being thrown in conjunction with the Keene Pumpkin Festival. And then the bros got rowdy and started throwing things like bottles, rocks, pumpkins, and skateboards. Students of the lighter persuasion were also lighting things on fire, pulling up street signs, and even managed to overturn at least one car. Police in riot gear then responded with tear gas and rubber bullets. 
According to police, about a dozen students were arrested. Twitter quickly lit up with people pointing out the difference in the police response when compared with the Michael Brown protest a few weeks back in Ferguson, Missouri. No word yet on how many innocent pumpkins were slaughtered, although officials fear the number could be astronomically high.